Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Joel, the second chapter. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will it be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Word of God, word of life. and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And when your father who sees in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. 
For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, I didn't know until I was in seminary that the gospel for Ash Wednesday is the exact same gospel every year. Some things they do teach you. And when I look back at how I have preached this text since I was ordained, I've taken the same direction every year. I've taken a discussion of the spiritual disciplines of Lent, those classic disciplines of fasting and praying and giving to the poor, and they're all good things. They are disciplines. It's discipline that makes disciples, right? So I might have talked with you or asked you to think about what sort of spiritual disciplines you would be observing during our 40-day journey toward Easter, how you would pray, how you might fast, how you might differently give to the poor. I might have also asked you to consider this, that a few weeks ago, our gospel had Jesus speaking to the crowds and saying, you are the light of the world Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Our baptismal charge to everyone who receives that gift of God's grace. And I might have asked you to think about that, being the light of the world and letting your light shine. And then I might ask you to think about Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father in secret. Don't disfigure your face when you fast. So what is it, Jesus, letting your light shine? Or don't do like the hypocrites do, do everything in secret. And if we do things in secret, then why do we receive the cross on our foreheads And that's pretty much what I've preached for the last five or so years. And those two things, letting your light shine and do not not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, are both in the same Bible. They're actually both in the same gospel. They're both preached by the same person. And they're preached only one chapter apart. They're both preached in the same Sermon on the Mount. So I'll let you struggle with that and ponder that throughout the remainder of Lent, whether you let your light shine openly or whether you do your good works in secret. That will be between you and your Lord. But this Lent, what has been more significant to me is this question of dust, this question of returning to the dust from which God forms us. And I don't know whether it's a function of aging and seeing the end of my life more clearly in the mirror, of certainly being in the second half of my life, or the fact that even in this congregation, we have lost a number of people recently. Lyle Saul of Beloved Memory, Stan Hubing of Beloved Memory, Shirley Shea, Gail Jacobs right before I came, John Newcomb, and I know that many of you have lost parents and spouses and in some cases children as well, and that a dear friend and colleague of mine a month younger than me passed away suddenly and unexpectedly within the last few weeks. We have a member on hospice. We have another member who is heading toward hospice. For all of us, our days are numbered. We can think about that. And how do we feel about that? Will we be given a blessed end? 
with family members surrounding our deathbed, chanting the Psalms, receiving a bit of communion on our lips, or will we be in a less pleasant state when we pass away that may be out of our control? Not so long ago, I heard about another person who is terrified, terrified about the end. Not necessarily the end of their life, but the end of human existence. This person has become captive to some fear-mongering conspiracy theories and is convinced that these are the very last days and that the end of the, the world is coming very soon within our lifetimes, that it will be violent, that it will be horrific, and that this person needs to prepare themselves and arm themselves for this Armageddon so that they can come out of it as a survivor. My dear friends, if anything like that happens, I would like to be the first one to die. If you have no hope for anything good at the end, if you believe that all there is to this life is this life, then I have good news for you. There is more to this life than this life. That there is a God who, as scripture tells us, formed us out of the dust of the earth and God's very own breath, spirit, breathed into us. And whether you take this with a childlike faith, imagining God in kneeling down in the sandbox, or whether you take this story as deeply and profoundly true, whether or not it's historical, we are made from the dust of ancient stars, which is self, which themselves were made by God. God breathed breath into us, and that the end of this life is not the end of this life. There is a life to come. The words we receive as the ashes are put on our brow are remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But in dust you will not remain. We have a promise from God, a sure and certain promise in which we place all of our hope, and that is the promise of the resurrection to eternal life. When you consider the scope of God's love, God who created the furthest galaxies and God who continues to create, our span of life on earth is no more than just a few seconds in that clock of ages, isn't it? Our mortal life. But we are made for eternal life. So what if the world is about to end? What if this person who is so scared and who has been so whipped up by fear, and there are some rational reasons to fear. We have enough nuclear weapons to conclude things before the clock strikes midnight tonight. If the world were ending tonight or tomorrow or a week from now, or if your own life were ending tonight or tomorrow or a week from now, how would you live your life differently? What is your unfinished business? What would you do? And friends, what God calls you to do is to remain faithful in those disciplines of being a disciple as if the world would never end. The disciplines of prayer, of fasting, of giving to the poor, of loving justice and doing justice loving mercy and doing mercy, and walking humbly with God. We don't know exactly what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future, the God to whom we give glory for the promise of greatness. God is Alpha and Omega, and we are invited into that Omega, into that end that has no end. And the end of the story is a happy one. Thanks be to God. Amen. I uh, have a blessing to share with you by a poet 
and an artist named Jan Richardson. This is from her book called Circle of Grace. And these are the words, the blessing is called Blessing the Dust. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt. As if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes, that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked not for sorrow, and let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility, or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made, and the stars that blaze in our bones, and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. Amen. Friends in Christ, tonight with God's people in the church throughout the world, we enter into Lent, a time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death into life, a time when our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a disciplined faith, to practice our faith in a way that renounces evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. So I invite you to the discipline of Lent, to self-examination and repentance, to prayer and fasting, to sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. I invite you to rise now. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left done. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. 
Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. By the cross and resurrection of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Amen. You may be seated. Those who are willing to come forward to receive ashes know that these are a sign of our finitude and a sign of God's blessing and love for us. Make it a reminder of the cross, the sign of the cross with which you were baptized that you've been marked with that cross and sealed by the Holy Spirit forever. This cross that you receive tonight will wash away, but the sign of the cross made on you on the day of your baptism, though indelible, is permanent. Uh, you can come forward as you wish. You don't need to come forward row by row. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Renew your church, O God, when we have drifted from our call. Lead us back to you, merciful God. Renew your creation, O God. Let there be life, merciful God. Renew our civic life, O God. Let there be truth, reconciliation, and justice, merciful God. Renew our world, O God. Bring an end to all wars. Merciful God. Renew our lives, O God. Heal your people who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Merciful God. Renew this congregation, O God. Deepen our faith and increase our love. Merciful God. Renew our faith, O God. When we prepare to return to dust, remind us of your promise of resurrection. Merciful God. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. 
。阿门。The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We live into the Lord. Let us give. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. Behold what you are. Become what you receive. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs>